Welcome, welcome. So we are going to elevate our drawing skills by going from our elementary selves to our middle school selves. Now this isn't gonna be the most detailed, beautiful, museum-worthy art piece. My purpose of this particular activity is to get you guys to draw with a little bit more intention with uh, behind everything. So we're gonna first start off with a tree and we're going to put it on the left side of your paper. Okay, so this is gonna take take up your entire page in your sketchbook, right? So make sure that you have enough page. We're gonna stick a house and everything on this side. So again, our tree is going on the left side, okay? Now I'm going to draw and give you tips. And what you're going to do is you're going to watch. When I pause the video or when I stop drawing, I'll give you instructions. And then that is when you will start to draw in your sketchbook, okay? So for right now, no one should have a pencil in their hand. You're just watching and actively listening, okay? So, because this particular piece is going to have three main areas, the foreground, the middle ground, and then the background, okay? Anything that we draw that is in the foreground closer to the viewer is going to be drawn bigger. So with this particular tree, we're going to draw it fairly large, and not only that, but we're going to make it have no leaves just to make it a lot easier to draw the branches and see the structure of everything, okay? So again, we're just watching. So I'm just gonna kind of start down here. Think of like a shoulder, like your own human shoulder, okay? This is where the tree is growing out of the ground. You can put your tree further down if you like, but don't put it right on the bottom of your page because then it's not gonna look quite right, okay? So I'm gonna have my tree come up. It's gonna be maybe I'll give a little texture now, I'm going to start drawing some branches, okay? Your branches don't have to go the exact same way mine are, but I do wanna just kind of give you some tips and feedback, essentially, when you're working. So I'm just kind of starting off with these random little lines going the way that I want them to go. And I'm going to have this line get more and more narrow, and then that's the end of my branch, okay? Now, to start another branch, I can do kind of like a U, like it's a U-turn, okay? Can draw another line, and I could draw a bigger U here. See that? And then that way I know I have all of these different parts of my tree that I want the branch to essentially branch off of. And something that you might have noticed is that my branches are going, at least on this side for right now, are going off the page. Okay, we're gonna mention this a couple of times but there is something called the four corners rule in art. That doesn't necessarily mean things have to touch the actual corner. It just means that it needs to touch all four sides of the paper. That helps with composition. That helps with filling the space. So if everything is crammed inside your page and nothing is touching any of the sides, that is going to make it look very small and feel more empty. So I always try to recommend you put at least one thing, if possible, touching at least two of the sides just to get you started. But then as you get better with your art skills, doing the four corners rule will really elevate your art, okay? So I'm going back to my tree. I'm gonna add another little U right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of just fast forward a little bit just so you don't have to sit there and watch me draw all of these branches. Now, my tree looks like this. Your tree might look different, and that's okay. But what I want you guys to notice is that your branches shouldn't all be the same exact straightness and shape and super cartoony and blocky, right? When we think of organic and natural things in nature, there tend to be more waviness, okay? So keep that in mind, because what I'm gonna talk about right now is getting some texture on our tree. So, to make our lives easier, we can start kind of with a little hole that can be where little squirrels live. And I'm gonna just kind of do some lines around it. Now, when we go to talk about texture later on in the year, I will teach you something called snake and eggs. And yes, you heard that correctly, snake and eggs. So what I want you to just kind of do right now is just notice that all of my lines are a little wobbly, but not super wobbly. I have thrown a little tiny oval in there. 
some of my lines are going in different directions. Some are longer, some are shorter, okay? Again, I'm going to fast forward right now. That way you don't have to sit and watch me draw this texture and you should still just be watching. I'm almost done with the tree. I will let you draw and then we'll move on to the house. All right, so this is essentially what my tree is looking like. Can add a couple little lines here to kind of show that there's maybe some grass growing around it, okay? We aren't gonna add any leaves because I just want us to focus on drawing the structure, understanding a little bit of texture, and then being able to draw the more organic forms of our branches. So now we're going to look at our middle ground. So the middle ground is essentially what's happening in the middle of your composition. And so because it's getting further away from us, right, it's going towards the background, it's going to be drawn smaller. Not tiny, tiny, right, but a little bit on the medium side. So I'm gonna stick my house about right here. And again, we're just gonna watch how I do it. Now, I'm actually gonna start with the cartoon shape that we don't typically wanna draw with anymore, right? But this is gonna be the foundation, and then we're gonna show you how to make it three-dimensional, okay? So you're just watching. I'm sticking it about right here, right? Not making it too big, leaving some space from the tree. It's not anywhere near this bottom of the page. Okay, I'm just doing like a square. Then we're gonna do the triangle. Very cartoony house, right? Easy peasy. Now, to make it three-dimensional, I'm gonna start here, okay? If you draw your line straight, that is not a perspective that will work. To make it three-dimensional and to show depth, we're going to go almost like we're going to the side of the paper, like this corner, okay? Now, we've all been in a math class, right? So, when a line is running right next to another one, going the same direction, and they are not touching, that is called a parallel line. So this line and this line are going to be parallel. So it's going to go the same direction, okay? Now the length of this line will determine how long your house is. I do not want my house to be very long for the sake of this drawing. Of course, in real life, I'd want a nice big house. But I'm gonna make my line go straight because this is a straight line. So this will be parallel to this guy. Straight, straight, diagonal, diagonal. This will be diagonal, right? Because it's going parallel with this. And this line is diagonal. So we're gonna close our house. And I'm drawing at a wonky angle so my head does not hit the camera. So my house turned out like that, okay? For the front of the house, because it's facing us, we do not have to do anything fancy. I'm gonna draw the window and the little wooden slats. Now, to draw a window, or you could even say a garage, right, on this side of the house, you're gonna have to do what we just did, where you have to draw diagonal and parallel. It can be kind of confusing at first, so make sure you're watching, all right? So I'm just gonna make one big window. This line is parallel. This line is parallel. Straight, straight. Now, if I want these middle guys like we do in a normal looking kind of drawn house, right? We're gonna go diagonal again. So it's one, two, three diagonals. One, two, three straight up vertical lines. These do not have any angles. If I wanna get fancy and do another one, it would still just be straight lines, okay? So that's essentially how you would draw the house. Now, one of the biggest things that younger artists do a lot is they stick every single thing on the same line. And we don't wanna do that anymore. So our horizon line for this particular drawing is going to go about right up here, okay? You could take your knuckle, this is about an inch. You could say it's about an inch from the top of your page, okay? Now my ground, right? My horizon line is running into my branch. So I'm just gonna kind of skip over my branches. If this is really tough for you to figure out how to skip, 
draw right through your branches, take your eraser, erase it and fix it, okay? Hopefully you've been drawing very light this whole time. And so that way it will be a little bit easier for you to fix. Now, going back to the four corner rule that we mentioned at the beginning, I'm gonna add some clouds, right? I don't wanna do overly cartoony clouds per se. I wanna do more wavy looking clouds. And again, I'm drawing them kind of smaller as they get closer to this horizon line because that means they're really far away. These clouds are really far away. I want some of my clouds to peek behind the branches. This one's gonna be kind of a big guy. And so we're just gonna add some clouds. Now, we all know how I feel about putting suns in the corner. We're not doing that. You can put your sun in the middle. It can be like a sunrise or sunset. You can do what I kind of like to do is I always try to give my sun a little cloud friend. And I'm just going to add it behind there. Ta-da. Now, that is our horizon line. So that is our background. This is all the way in the back. This is the middle and this tree is in the front. Now to make it all kind of look like it's in the same picture and not in a lot of random things, we're going to add a cobblestone path. So this cobblestone path is going to start off very narrow. Narrow means skinny, okay? It's gonna start off narrow and then it's going to get progressively wider because we've mentioned this before, but as a reminder, when you're drawing something that's in the background, it's going to be small. As it gets to the foreground or the front of the picture, it's going to be bigger. So this is the part where kids kind of mess up a little bit because they have a tough time getting the line to go from skinny to wide. They make it wide way too fast or it's still skinny throughout the whole thing. I want you to watch to kind of see how I do it, okay? Just so it can help you when you draw yours. So it's gonna be the width of my door, okay? So I'm just gonna make it slightly wavy and come past my tree, okay? Now, this is gonna start narrow. It's gonna get slightly wider, slightly wider. Now it's gonna get pretty wide, all right? Now, you could leave it like this if you want, but to make it look very cobblestone, right? And have a more rock texture, if you will, right? Going back to texture. I'm gonna start off with smaller kind of ovals. You can make a more blobby shape, right? Kind of close together, however you, however you wanna make your cobblestone. Now it's the same thing. As I'm getting closer to my foreground, AKA the edge of my paper, my cobblestones, I said that really funny, my cobblestones should be getting progressively bigger. Now, again, if you're drawing your cobblestones kind of like me, you need to make sure that you're not making them too big, too quickly, or else that perspective and that depth will not make any sense. So again, I am just making them a bit bigger as I get to the edge. And you can see how big these cobblestones look compared to my tiny one. So if I were to be in this picture, it would look as if I'm walking towards this house, right? So I can add, you know, if you wanted to add little animals, right? They'd be smaller if you're drawing them in the background here, about medium size, right? If you're drawing them in the middle ground, if you were to draw like a big old cow or a pig or a horse, right in the foreground, right up here, okay? It would be drawn bigger. I feel like putting a little tiny lake back here, put a little wave, show that it's water, okay? So if there's time in class, what I do want you to do is to just add some things that you would like. So if you want to add like a little lake up front, it would be bigger. You can add animals, you can add like a bench for someone to sit, right? So I can add a little bench right here real quickly, using the perspective of parallel lines, right? This leg would go here. This would be like the, the brace of it, okay? I could do slants and I could add the wood texture, right? So you can get very creative with what you're wanting to do and add. If there's no time left in class or we're really low on time, then you have access to your drawing because it's in your sketchbook. You can even add color if you like. You can kind of shade with your pencil if you want. 
But I hope you got something out of this to help elevate your drawing skills. We went from more elementary today, having fun with that, and then making it a little bit more elevated, talking about depth, drawing with perspective, talking about texture, talking about the foreground, middle ground, and background. We mentioned the four corner rule, right? So I have something in my drawing that's touching all four sides of the paper. Okay, so we learned a lot today. Hopefully you had some fun. Hopefully you feel like you can even grow more after day with af uh, after everything I'm gonna go over for the whole school year. This kind of drawing will look even better. So go ahead, if you have time, keep adding. If not, go ahead and pack up and I will see you tomorrow.